I'm Mark Pagani, and this is Tasting Tuesdays. So welcome to Tasting Tuesdays. Uh, we've got a very special guest today. Uh, this is Tracy Napolitano from the New Orleans Bourbon Festival. Um, he's going to talk a little bit about, uh, about whiskey and, and the fest and all that kind of stuff. So tell me, um, how did you first get into whiskey? I guess, like most people, when you're a kid, you're sneaking in the liquor cabinet <laughs> at your parents' house. And, you know, I went up to LSU for college mm -hmm. and got a job right away at a bar. And the first night behind the bar, everyone was giving me shots of Wild Turkey 101. Oh, that's, that's Turns out everyone else was drinking watered-down Coke to look like Wild Turkey. Uh -huh. So I got hammered. I'm surprised <laughs> I actually still like whiskey. Yeah. But uh, that's kind of was the start of the real journey to, uh, to getting where we are today with having the festival and the collection I have at home. Cool. And that was in college, which was like, you know, five years ago. For sure. You, right? Yeah, sure. We'll go with that. <laughs> um, so uh, what gave you the impetus? How did you end up starting the New Orleans Bourbon Festival? So we were in Atlanta for my wife's best friend's birthday, uh, and it was the weekend at Atlanta Wine and Food Festival. Mm -hmm. So we went to one of the tasting, and it had tents spread out for different countries okay. with food mm -hmm. and drink from those countries. Right. And they added a tent with American comfort food, mm -hmm. and that's where the bourbon was. You had four roses on one end. You had the bullet woody on the other end. Right. And when you take a step back at that event, the line for all the tents were non-existent except for one. Wow. And it was not the food. It was the whiskey. It was the whiskey. So I came home. We were sitting around the table with our business partners having dinner. My wife cooked a nice dinner for everyone. We were just hanging out drinking whiskey. And she's like, do something with this whiskey collection. And I th you know, being a CPA, and you know my wife. Yeah. I thought probably. she wanted me to sell it. You know, finance. Get rid of it. You know? Yeah. And it turns out it was, can you create a job out of this or a business? And it turns yeah. out we created the New Orleans Bourbon Festival based on what we saw in Atlanta in that one tasting tent. Awesome, very cool. Um, so tell me a little bit about the festival and, and uh, what it's about, what, what happens at the festival. So we've grown to a four day event now. We have the Bourbon Brawl on, uh, at Harris on uh, Wednesday night, which mm -hmm. is a bartender competition for the best bourbon cocktail in New mm -hmm. Orleans. Um, Thursday, we have the Blind Judging, where our 50 ultimate VIP uh, guests pass judgment as, as consumers on their favorite whiskeys in a blind tasting. Right. Thursday evening, we have all the bourbon dinners uh, throughout the city. And then we have the VIP party, which this year will be a 1930s, 1920s, 30s casino oh, cool. Cool. Uh, style event at yeah. the, uh, the Hilton New Orleans Riverside. Cool. And then uh, other tastings as well? So uh, Friday, uh, starting Friday morning, we have all the seminar series. Uh, okay. Starts Friday. Friday evening at 7 p.m. at the Contemporary Arts Center, we go into the grand tasting for the first night. Okay. 7 to 8 VIP, 8 to 11, all of our guests. Nice. And then on same thing starts over on Saturday, 10 a.m., seminars till about 5.30. Right. We go to the tasting at 7 again, 7 to 8 VIP, everyone after 8. Cool. Uh, but one new thing that we're adding, and you're going to be the first to hear about it, cool. is we just did a deal with the Sazerac House. Oh, nice. So on Saturday from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m., there will be an event at the Sazerac House for people to sign up and attend, get some cocktails. Some, uh, they're going to have some food, and you'll be able to tour the Sazerac House and kind of hang out oh, at a little wow. party for a few hours before you head on over to the tasting at the CAC. That's really cool. So at the CAC for non-VIP people and VIP people, is there food as well? There is food. We have restaurants from around the city. We have you know, generally about 20 different restaurants spread throughout the venue. Um, we Last year we had a Lucky Dog cart, which was cool. Everybody loved that. We're trying really cool. to hopefully have that back this year. Yeah. But we have 170 different American whiskeys for you to taste through. Wow. Um, we've expanded some of the categories over the, you know, the four years as we went from bourbon, bourbon and rye, to American whiskey. We've got some... Uh, chocolate whiskeys this year Damn. we um you know we're gonna have a few different new and unique things we are gonna have some bourbon barrel aged beer for the first time this oh, year oh wow cool so very cool that sounds like what uh so tell me about uh, tickets how much do they cost and, and where can we get them tickets start at 69 dollars for the food only designated driver okay. all the way up to 520 for the ultimate vip but unfortunately all sold out oh yeah. um you can get them at our website it's www.nobourbonfest.com Okay. Um, you get yeah, them I'll there. I'll show that down here on the, on the bottom of the screen. And, or you can download our app at the Apple Store. Uh, it's the New Orleans Bourbon Fest 2020 app. Cool. That's really easy. Yeah. Cool. Well, you brought a, a bottle of something here. I did. I brought our bottle pick, our, our barrel pick of Peerless Bourbon. This 
What's great about this, while well, Peerless has released bourbon at other places in the country, uh -huh. New Orleans did not make the allocation list. Okay. But our sponsorship and partnership with Peerless got us a barrel. Awesome. So we have the only barrel available in Louisiana Damn. for a Peerless bourbon. Cool. Is that going to be available for sale anywhere? It's available uh, nine different locations around the city. Right. Um, you know, Martin's, Dornex, um, let's see, on the Calandros in Baton Rouge. Mm -hmm. You've got uh, Sia's on the West Bank, uh, Savannah. I'm okay. um, on the North Shore. Savannah's on the West Bank. Cool. So we, there's places spread throughout the city. Cool. Brady's Wine Warehouse uh, has it as well. Cool. I'll have to go look for it. Um, well, uh, I'm going to do a little uh, talk about uh, what's what, what's in here and what's what, what this particular whiskey is all about. And then when we come back, uh, we'll do a tasting. Perfect. Kentucky Peerless Distilling Company is located in Louisville, Kentucky. Their single barrel selections allow for concentration on a particular barrel's unique characteristics. Master distiller Caleb Kilburn, who at 27 is the youngest master distiller in Kentucky, carefully hand selects barrels that highlight distinctive natural profiles to be offered in the Peerless private single barrel selection. Once a barrel is chosen, it is bottled at barrel proof and given a unique label. Each barrel typically yields 216 to 230 bottles, allowing for limited availability. Selections that are offered in the distillery are offered exclusively and are a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Each bottle of Peerless Bourbon reads non-chill filtered, strictly sweet mash, no water added, and barrel proof. Lower on the label, you'll see distilled, bottled, and aged in the Louisville, Kentucky Bourbon District. Using a sweet mash process, Peerless produces only 10 to 12 barrels a day. Painted on the wall at Kentucky Peerless is a statement, strictly sweet mash. In the 19th century, early distillers used sour mashing to ensure a consistent batch of whiskey every time. It involves using a bit of the setback spent grain or starter from a prior cook to give the net next batch a boost into fermentation. Peerless instead starts with a new yeast for each batch. As for the mash bill, we're looking at around 70% corn, 10 to 20% rye, and nine to 15% malted barley without getting too specific. And now that you're an expert on single barrel Peerless Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey, it's time for some whiskey pour. Okay, so now that you know a little bit more about this uh, Kentucky Peerless Distilling Company's uh, Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey uh, single barrel selection, uh, we're going to talk to Ter uh, Ter Ter Terry Tracy a little bit about um, about the selection process. Uh, you were there, you did it. How'd it go? Yeah, we uh, we did we actually you know for the festival we did twenty three different barrel picks this wow. year. So they're all being sold around New Orleans if you're looking to get something different uh, uh, than what you find on the shelves normally. Yeah. But we went there, we bring our team, we have about a four person team that we bring up from the festival, you know, mm -hmm. whether it's friends, you know, or people with that are part of the festival. Yeah. And then, but this particular one, we invited Fred Minnick uh, to come join us for this pick. So then talk about Fred Minnick. So, people so, so, so Fred is um, a historian. He is an author. He reviews whiskey. He has shows on Amazon. He's part of the Bourbon Plus magazine. Yeah. So he's a well-known bourbon enthusiast. Yeah. Uh, or aficionado, however you want to call him. I don't know what he actually calls himself these days, but yeah. uh, he uh, he's pretty well known in the industry. He's got a great palate. So, cool. so he was there. Uh, yeah, we've become friends with him over the years. So we invited him to come sit down awesome. and join us in awesome. this tasting. This tasting actually had eight people because the Peerless group joined wow. us too. So was it uh, pretty much unanimous when uh, you decided on this particular? It, it was. It was. We did a we did a rye and we did a bourbon. Okay, and cool. on both of them, we knew and we've picked barrels there before. So. Uh, Cordell and Caleb know our profile, cool. so they know what barrels to go in and select. I want to think we picked from six barrels on nice. this one. Nice. So, but it was pretty unanimous when we got to this. It was the one. Um, and so, tell me, we talked a little bit in the last segment about the whiskey. Um, what did you guys end up naming it? So this one is called Buttered Toffee. Okay, that yeah. gives a little hint of, of what um, we're going to be tasting yes. here. Um, let's pour it and see see what we think. So, what do you get on the nose? So right away, I get that sweetness mm -hmm. where we came up with the, the caramel, the butterscotch, 
um, that's you know where we started coming up with this name when we uh, were sitting down drinking this one. Right. That's you know classic yeah. uh, bourbon flavor. Cla- it, it, exactly. Yeah. You you're not far off on what the classics are in this yeah. one. Yeah. And it's uh, I get that I get a little bit of that too, but I also get like a really fragrant soap, like from a fancy soap store. Um, really, it's uh, kind of amalgamous, like a, like a big um, floral thing. I, I can I can see that as well. Yeah. And you definitely have some floral notes in here, yeah. and I can uh, I can see it being fancy soap. Yeah. Well, initially on the palate, I get a little bit of that uh, the proof burn. Yes. On there, um, it, and but it's surprising. It's a uh, for as young as it is, four years, one month. Um, it it has. I hate using the word smooth, but it has that kind of age. It, it shows older age than it really is. I think it does. You know, it comes off that like you said, the proof on the front end yeah. when you first get it in your mouth, and it just kind of levels off. Right. You right. Get nice. That, that nice smooth. You still get a little of that Kentucky hug as it slides yeah. on down, yeah. but it's a. Uh, it's a good for a four year one month. It's a good. Uh, it's a good bourbon. Yeah, it really is. Um, it, the the palate uh, there's a little bit of a hint of oak. Um, you're not going to get a ton of oak on a on a bourbon this young, um, but it's definitely there a little bit. And then, like you said, I do get a bit of that. Uh, I get like kind of, kind of a hot butterscotch um, yeah. thing, and and a little bit of that toffee you were talking about. Um, and the finish is. What do you think? Yeah, I think it's got a longer finish than mm-hmm. a most four-year bourbons you find. It's yeah. got a finish like an older bourbon. Exactly. It, it lingers. It sticks around for a little bit, and you, you keep that flavor in your mouth for a while. Yeah. I had a 10-year uh, bourbon at uh, Adam's Place on the North Shore um, on Saturday, and it reminds me of this. Like it's yeah. got, it's, So this has quite a bit of, of uh, you know, maturity, I guess, yeah. for, for such a young, young whiskey. It's really nice. It wasn't as mature as that chestnut. No, <laughs> we had a we had a, uh, a chessman from the '70s, uh, Old Crow, um, and it was the Bishop uh, on Saturday night, and it was just wow. It looked like motor oil. It was so dark and, and really lovely. I thought it tasted a lot like a tiramisu. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah, rich and creamy yeah. that way. Yeah. So uh, that's our tasting of uh, the single barrel peerless Kentucky Shape Bourbon whiskey. Again, this is um, a special pick from the New Orleans Bourbon Festival. Um, and you only can get this, you know, at local places, but if you happen to be passing through New Orleans area, North Shore, West Bank, um, look for this, and also look for their, their non-special picks. Uh, Peerless makes a nice whiskey in general. Um, one thing we didn't talk about is, what are the dates of uh, the whiskey? Oh, the we did miss that. Yeah. March 11th through the 14th, so okay. we're just a few weeks away here. Yeah, really um, close. The, uh, and for anyone looking for this, if you are at the festival and you don't find it in the stores, there may be opportunities mm. to find one at the Bourbon find Fest. Find Tracy this year. at the Bourbon Fest and get so a little. Yeah, we, uh, we may have point. held a little back for yeah. a special cool well, time good. during the, the week of Bourbon Fest. So, nice. Yeah. Well, yeah. So N O Bourbon Fest. N O Bourbon Fest dot com, and uh, make sure you go and get your tickets. It's an amazing event. I've uh, been to. This would be my third one. It's uh, it's amazing how many bourbons are there, how many whiskeys are there, rise as well. Um, and then you've also got all that amazing New Orleans food. I mean, how can you go wrong? It's really reasonably priced. And it's definitely, not only the, the tasting, the grand tasting, but all the seminars, you'll learn so much. Definitely worth a trip to New Orleans if you don't live here. If you do live here and you like whiskey, it's a no-brainer. So uh, thanks so much to Tracy Napolitano for, for coming in today. Thanks for having me. And uh, we'll see you next week.